What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to Wednesday's Late Night Agenda. Our competitors are currently in action. Arsenal leading by two goals to nil last time I checked. I think City are one nil up based off the chat. I don't have the game on in the background. But there is a lot to go through today. We seem to be closing in on Ruben Amarum. I'm going to give you updates on that. A little bit of an injury update ahead of the game against Sheffield United tomorrow. And we're going to pose the question. Who starts? We've seen Arsenal play a fairly... Change team tonight. We see Manchester City have to make changes as well. No Haaland and the starting eleven for them. Will we see similar from Jurgen Klopp tomorrow against Chris Wilder, Sheffield United? Uh, I think we probably will, you know. But we're going to ask you guys to give us your thoughts. And of course, feel free to keep me up to date with what is going on in the uh, the other games. Arsenal's game's done and dusted. We don't need to concern ourselves with that. They're going to go on and beat Luton fairly comfortably this evening, as you would expect. So Man City, Aston Villa, that's the only one tonight where maybe we thought a potential of a, a slip up from City, but doubtful. Of course, we've got to go do our job tomorrow as well, which is beat Sheffield United. A uh, bit of an interesting stat I wanted to bring up tonight, actually. A former friend of the channel, what well, friend of the channel, I should say, former friend of myself personally. I say former because I haven't spoken to him in a long time. Uh, Jonathan Higgins has posted to say, a bit of a mad stat. Assuming Cuevin Kelleher starts tomorrow, he'll have played the same amount of games as Alison Becker this season. And that kind of caught me off guard. I mean, Jonathan is, um, you know, a really good lad, definitely knows his football. And when I seen him post that, I just thought, wow, that is actually interesting. I never, ever would have thought that now that Kelleher would have played the same amount of games. Oh, 1-1, one, one, is it? Wow, 1-1. Aston Villa have apparently equalised. Wow, who scored? Because I know there's no Ollie Watkins today, so woo, 1-1. One, one. Dare we dream? I'm not dreaming yet. I'm not dreaming yet. It's too early in the evening to start thinking about that. But it's a good sign. Maybe puts the pressure on a little bit. Duran with the goal. Nice one. Thank you. There we go. Interesting stuff. 24 matches, said Barry Lee for Queefing Kelleher. Nice. Look, I think we'll all agree Queefing's had um, a great campaign so far. It has been a more than able deputy for Alison Becker. So, yeah, happy days. Jens, don't be giving me the possible offside nonsense, buddy. <laughs> I don't want to hear about VAR. I'm sick of listening to VAR. So let's just pretend that we don't have to worry about possible offside. But uh, nobody else has mentioned it. Just the Manchester United fan in the chat. Only messing with you, by the way, Jensk. Right, my friend. Loads to talk about. Um, we're going to be discussing the injury concern over Watoro Endo. I say concern. It's probably just a knock. Nothing too serious. But Jurgen was speaking about it. And I'm going to go through that in a few moments. What, oh, there was a few gifted subs I needed to thank. A few gifted memberships. Sorry, I want to scroll back up. Uh, Jensk, thank you, buddy, for gifting five Anfield Agenda memberships. Really kind of you, sir. Especially for a Manchester United fan. Appreciate that one. Uh, Frankie, welcome to Anfield Agenda Ultras, mate. Seven months with us. I say welcome. I should be thanking you for your time on the channel. Seven months with us. Nice. No offside. Goal given. Boom. 1-1. One, one. As we sit here now, Manchester City won. Uh, who scored for City, by the way? I, I pay no attention to it. I was watching the first half of the Arsenal game, but I can't really bring myself to watch City games. Where possible, I try to avoid them. Goal given. 1-1. One, one. Nice. We like that. Uh, Rodri, ah, oh, interesting. Rodri's um, he's had some big moments for Manchester City this season, hasn't he? And Rodri, wow, interesting. Right, a little bit of a confirmation uh, regarding Thiago Alcantara. It's not really breaking news, but it's always good to report these things, I guess. Thiago Alcantara will leave Liverpool at the end of the current campaign when his contract comes to an end. Uh, there's been speculation that he may well end up over in Saudi Arabia or Qatar, but no surprise there to hear that Thiago Alcantara will be departing in the summer. It just hasn't worked out for the last year, really. He's been, um, unfortunately, riddled with injuries, so we haven't been able to utilise him in the season. So no surprises there. Probably the same with Joel Matip as well. Um, Joel Matip actually is back doing a little bit of running and stuff, but Jürgen said that the, any game time this season will come too soon for him. So we'll probably see... Him moved on as well. Uh, Nick Wells, thank you for upgrading your membership, buddy, to Anfield Agenda Ultras. Really appreciate that. Don't forget, tomorrow I'm going to be asking you guys for five names, five suggestions for Thank You Thursday for people that we should invite into the Discord group. So maybe just get your thinking caps on and uh, we'll have a talk about that tomorrow. And don't forget, half past six will be live for the watch along of tomorrow's game. 
Tonight, though, we have a lot to go through. So I'm going to be discussing all the latest in Ruben Amaram. But beforehand, I suppose we should probably start off with a couple of injury updates from Jürgen ahead of our game. Uh, speaking about Curtis Jones, this is what the gaffer had to say. He said, Curtis is in full training and is in contention. Uh, that's it pretty much. The boys are doing well. He went on to say, Diogo and Trent are together in a group which help. Uh, both look good for next week, hopefully in parts with team training, then we'll have to see with the rest of it. He went on to say, no Alisson, he is with the goalkeeping coaches and i just seen him through the fence. He looks good, uh, but in his mind as well, next week he will be part of team training. A little concern about Waturo Endo, I don't think it's anything we need to be too worried about, but Kloppo did say that Endo is a very important player, he went on to praise him for the impact this season, but he did say he has a little bit of a knock after the last game, so we'll have to see tomorrow what we can do with him. And in all honesty, I'd say rest them tomorrow if needs be. We should be able to manoeuvre a team together to beat Sheffield United at Anfield. And uh, we want to make sure that we have Waturo available for Old Trafford on Sunday. So if we need to give him a rest tomorrow and put one of the other guys in midfield, hey, you could even throw Joe Gomez into that number six role again if needed. Um, so yeah, that's where we are with the injury updates anyway. Uh, by Cechic will be training with the under-21s. He'll be doing more work with them next week. Jürgen spoke about that as well. So again, no date there for when we may see Stefan by Cechic back on, well, in the matchday squads. Uh, hopefully Grafenberg starts tomorrow, said Gumi. I think that's fairly reasonable, mate, yeah. Um, Ronnie said, Craig, I went on the Anfield tour today. That's class. Well in, mate. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I haven't been since the Annie Rodan was done. I was there after they did the main stand, but I haven't been since the Annie Rodan was done. Um, who watched latest LFCT video with Double O Mo? I haven't seen it yet, George. I haven't seen it yet, bud. Who's the captain for City because De Bruyne is on the bench? I don't know, mate. It doesn't matter. Just another mercenary, I guess, will be the answer. Is Gravenberg fit? Yes, yeah, Shane. He is my man. He's good to go. Um, he probably will come in contention for a start tomorrow. He's in my predicted 11. If I remember correctly, I think I had him in there with Alexis McAllister in midfield. But that's before I knew about Waturo's knock. So maybe we see McAllister back in that deeper role with Gravenberg and Elliot ahead. I think I'd be okay with that tomorrow starting against uh, Sheffield United. There you go. Ruben Diaz. This is why I love our community. Don't know the answer to a question. All I have to do is throw it into the chat and somebody has the answer for us. We love it. Now, you may have seen at the start of the stream an advertisement. I just want to talk to you about it really quickly. I can confirm both of these shows will be on sale on Friday on Ticketmaster. So, if you'd like to come and see us at the Limelight venue in Belfast... Tickets again on Ticketmaster, going on sale on Friday morning. And Dublin, we have confirmed the Academy is the venue in Dublin. We're going to be there on June the 2nd, two days after the show in Belfast. So again, those tickets will be on sale on Ticketmaster. We hope you can come and join us for what is shaping up to be two really fun shows. We're going to have a musical accompaniment with us this time as well. Get the place rocking. And hopefully... I'm gambling a little bit here, but hopefully we get to celebrate a really great end to the season for Jurgen and the boys. And um, yeah, we can party together and celebrate, fingers crossed, another league title. Nunes and Canade were too funny in the video. I, I have to watch it, Mo. I will give it a watch. Um, I just have so, been so busy over the past few days with loads of bits and pieces. What is the manager news? No problemo. Uh, let me give it to you now, my friend. So, lots of bits and pieces on Ruben Amaram this evening. Um, let's start off at the start of the day, where we got some news about the press conference last night after Sporting knocked Benfica out of the Portuguese Cup. Ruben Amaram was doing his post-match press conference and he was asked, will the final of the Portuguese Cup be your last game as Sporting's coach? His reply, we'll see. I like that reply. It's non-committal. It doesn't say yes to us, doesn't say no. But it gets more positive as the day goes on. So then we started to get the news that Barcelona is no longer in the race for Ruben Amram. And it's not because Liverpool are there. It's not because they don't want Ruben Amram. It's because they can't afford the 15 million euro to pay the release clause. That is not a good look for a club as big as Barcelona. And I do find this funny sometimes, by the way, because... 
15 million for a player would be nothing and we'd be all saying bargain. But sometimes clubs don't seem to want to pay for a manager. And I do find that weird because, you know, 10, 15 million euro for a manager seems a very good value if you consider how big an influence managers are on football clubs. So uh, Pedro Sepulveda has confirmed Barcelona are out of the race for Ruben Amaram. Going to say it again. Barca, who were apparently yesterday pushing hard, according to Miguel Delaney. Well, according to today, eh, eh, out of the race. So there we go. No more concerns about Barcelona with Ruben Amram. Goes on a little bit further and he said, uh, Barca won't look to Amram to replace Xavi. That is confirmed, according to Pedro. Goes on to say, Liverpool is leading the race for the Portuguese coach. The release clause is about 20 million euro. But Sporting could be willing to negotiate a little bit for a club outside of Portugal. Uh, Pedro went on to finish where Amaram's focus is now on the Portuguese League and the Portuguese Cup. Where, of course, Sporting are on for a potential double there. A little bit more, this time from Fabrizio Romano. Again, pointing in a good direction for Ruben Amaram and Liverpool. He said, the main name on Liverpool's shortlist is Ruben Amaram. Liverpool are really interested and already had some contact to understand the parameters of his release clause. We'll go a little bit further though, because that's not where the good news ended. Pedro Zepulveda then upped the ante a little bit. And he said, and this is the part that I got excited about, Liverpool have formally opened negotiations over welcoming Ruben Amaram to replace Jurgen Klopp this summer and are leading the race to sign the highly rated 39-year-old. The deal won't come cheap though, given that the manager's release clause sits at around 20 million euro or 17 million pound, though that could be renegotiated in the coming months, may even be set lower for clubs outside Portugal. So today, we're starting to see a clearer picture emerge and it looks like Ruben Amaram is the man that Liverpool are going after. And I think, you know, we're all a little bit disappointed about the Alonso situation. I'm not going to hide that, but I've always said, if it wasn't Alonso, Ruben Amaram is the next one on my list and I am, I'm starting to get very excited. Uh, there was a decent article written as well earlier on today. I'm trying to think of the name of the journalist again. Um, it was Sam, 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 Sam. Excuse me for forgetting Sam's surname, but there was a good article written listing why Ruben Amram is potentially a better coach for Liverpool than Xabi Alonso. That it's more sensible for Liverpool to be going after Ruben Amram than Xabi Alonso. So I'm really happy about it. But I'm going to ask a straightforward question tonight, my friends. Would you be happy if Amram is the next Liverpool manager? And we're going to put that to a poll as we always do. Soon as Craig figures out how to type. And still trying to figure out this typing thing. God almighty. Right, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. This is why you don't let the idiot type. Right, so would you be happy with Amram? Yes or no? We'll throw that poll up and leave it to your good selves to uh, make that decision. And we'll come back to that in a few moments time. Right, let me get to some of your comments because I haven't got to you in a few minutes. What's your favourite cereal and have you ever had ice cream on it? No, 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 I have not. What's my favourite cereal? I'm a pretty big fan of muesli. Uh, love muesli, love uh, anything with, um, what would you, what is it called again? Uh, granola, yes, love anything with granola and uh, muesli, so anything along those lines is usually quite good, and no mate I definitely have never put ice cream on my cereal, I don't, I've never heard of that before either, but um, I might try and get somebody in the family to give it a go again, because I don't think I'm going to be brave enough uh, Sultan said, 15 million euro is a lot Craig for a manager my point though mate, was not that it isn't a significant amount of money, it's that if you look at how important a role a manager is at a football club. And the fact that the manager would set the tone for the entire club in some instances. 50 million euro isn't a whole lot of money for the influence that a manager can have on the outlook of a club. So we often see we'll spend 30, 40, 50 million quid on players. But for a manager, 15 million euro, I mean, I mean, look, for us mere mortals, it's a lot of money. But I think... Seems reasonable. Now remember, Sporting paid 10 million euro themselves to get Ruben Amaram from Braga when they signed him. So, you know, it's not like they're just demanding money for a manager that they didn't pay for. They they did pay a release clause. 
Uh, Craig, I'm so poor when I go to KFC, I have to lick other people's fingers. I love that, Noel. <laughs> That's right up my sense of humour, mate. Um, but now I actually want to try and do that. I feel like I might get thrown out of KFC if I go around starting to lick other people's fingers. But um, as long as you get that finger licking goodness, mate, that's all good. Because we all know the kernel herbs and spices get the job done. So um, hopefully someday we can we can get you get you your own box of chicken there, dude. <laughs> that, that that did make me smile though, mate. And I needed a smile today, so thank you. Uh, Craig, do we know how much Klopp was back in the day from Dortmund? Nothing. We didn't have to pay anything. Klopp had uh, departed Dortmund, so there was no fee necessary. Uh, we look very similar, said Mr. Buffer. Said, we do. Your image looks a bit paler, though, so maybe we have to tan you up a little bit. McAllister or Mason Mount? Come on, now. One of them's a footballer, and the other one's usually an outpatient in an injury treatment clinic. <laughs> Uh, Craig, you're my favourite YouTuber. Riley, thank you so much. I, honestly, I never cease to be blown away by those type of things. Um, appreciate it. I really do, my man. I appreciate it. Can you give us a dad joke? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> so, a lot of the jokes I was told growing up by my own dad, I couldn't repeat right now because they're not very uh, politically correct. So, I don't know. Give us a dad joke. Um, again, most of my jokes are quite dark because of a dark sense of humour. Uh, give us a dad joke. I don't know, man. I really, I'm, I'm shit about stuff like this because, like, I remember the first joke I was ever, ever, ever told and it was... Something really straightforward, like why couldn't the orange cross the road because it ran out of juice? That you know, that was I think vague recollections of being in my sitting on my parents' bed about four or five years of age here and hearing that joke from my mum or dad. But yeah, I don't really have. I'm not a jokes kind of guy. I'm more of an observational humor type of person. I'll try and prepare one for you next time. You're top drawer, Craig said Alex. Mate, you're amazing. Thank you. You're amazing. I really appreciate it. The support and the confidence you guys have given me over the last couple of years, it means a lot. And that's why we're making sure that we go all out for these live shows as well. The Dublin show is costing us an absolute fortune. And I'll tell you how bad it is. The Dublin show is costing us more than all the other shows combined. But we want to do it right. And the Academy is the right venue to do it. So I hope that you guys will uh, see those. They're going to be up on Ticketmaster. So it should be easy for you guys to spot. Uh, the, both the shows in Ireland are 18 plus events. That's the licensing for the venues. In the UK, I'm delighted to be able to say both of our shows are going to be for every age group. So if you're going to come and see us in Liverpool on August the 4th, open to all age groups. Going to come see us in Cardiff, August the 2nd, open to all age groups. Uh, Pranav has gone with a prediction for tomorrow's starting 11. One sec, I need to get my wife to turn the heating off. Sorry, dude. Uh, Pranav said, Kelleher, Gomez, Ibu, Verge, Robbo, Maka, Gravenberg, Elliot, Mo, Gakpo, Darwin. His 11 for tomorrow. See, there's an argument to be made to rest Verge there, though, surely, Pranav. You know, of all the players that have played a lot of minutes this season... Verge hasn't got much of a rest, so I wouldn't even I wouldn't mind seeing Canade and um Canade and I don't know Gomez start at centre back tomorrow or Canade and Kwanzaa. I do feel we could do it giving Verge a bit of a breather. Maybe even you know take him off after sixty if needs be. Uh Alfie said Craig, I love you. Thank you, Alfie. That's very kind. Appreciate you. Your shows are charity. Uh, I don't know if they're quite charity. If, if, if they were charity, I wouldn't have to pay any tax on them. So definitely not. Who am I more worried about? City or Arsenal? By the way, your class. Daco, much love, my man. Thank you. Um, genuinely, I respect both of their ability to win games of football. I respect one club far more than the other, of course. I have a lot of respect for Arsenal, whereas I've got zero for City. Um, who am I worried about more? Probably Man City because I think Arsenal have a harder run in. Um, and, you know, a North London derby there and a couple of other opportunities. So I think City probably are the, the ones I'd be concerned about. Now, that's why I said the other day I wanted Arsenal to win at the Etihad. 
because that would have given us an even bigger buffer over Manchester City. Uh, but right now, we can only take care of us. And if we tick off each game, tomorrow, one more game out of the way. Sunday, if we can pick up three points at Old Trafford, another game out of the way. And we can't ignore the fact that Manchester United have an injury crisis in defence as well. And we should, uh, I think we should look to go there and make a statement. Now, of course, it's easy for me to sit here at home and say go to Old Trafford and make a statement. But I hope the players want to put the wrongs against United this season right. We drew with them at Anfield in a very, very poor performance by us. And, of course, we threw away the FA Cup tie when we went there before the international break. And we were punished for being wasteful in front of goal. And United pinched it at the end and won it. And fair play. Um, you know, they won a fair and square. No shenanigans or anything like that. But we need to put that right. And we need to show that we are a better side. So, for me, tomorrow, if you're going to make some rotation, fine. Just make sure we get the win and then we move on to Sunday. Do I like Ferrero Roche? Of course. Of course, dude. Who doesn't love it? Well, unless you have a nut allergy or something, who doesn't love a bit of Ferrero Roche? Mary Nelson said, cannot wait for Belfast. Thank you, mate. Thank you so much, Mary. Uh, love to see you there. Hope to see you there. And we will be, of course, doing a meet and greet afterwards as well, where we come down, talk to everybody, have a drink and discuss the Reds. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing. To be able to do Belfast, Dublin, Liverpool and Cardiff, it's, it's bucket list stuff for me, honestly, mate. I'm so, so excited. But... I'm going to be honest. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys because I don't know how other people, I don't know what other content creators talk about with their live shows, but it petrifies me doing them. It it scares the living hell out of me to stand on a stage in front of a group of people and talk. I can do it here, no problem. But, yeah. But I got to do it, right? I got to do it. I got to stand up there and challenge myself and see if I can sink or swim. So, uh I'm going to need your help on the nights. Make sure you uh, you show us some support. Get behind us and hopefully I'll be able to relax into the show and we have some fun. Am I a fan of Dr. Pepper? Uh, no, I'm not. I tried it once and didn't like it. So, no. I'm kind of setting my ways though with, with Diet Coke. Uh, Craig, Ireland under 21. Marco Mahoney on the bench for Brighton. 10 goals and 7 Prem 2 games. Cork boy. Nice. Wishing them all the best. Always good to have Irish boys doing well in the Premier League and getting into uh, into senior squad. So, yeah, nice nice touch there, Noel. Thank you for the update. Uh, you'll be golden, don't worry. Thank you, Kevin. Honestly, dude, it frightens the bejesus out of me doing a live performance. Um, but, you know what? Life's about challenges, right? So... Let's have a look at the poll. Ruben Amram. I love this. Would you be happy with Ruben Amram as manager? No doubt in any of your beautiful minds. 91% so far say, absolutely, Craig. We want Ruben Amram. We'd be happy with him as a Liverpool manager. Uh, Salah or Hazard? The answer to that question is, without any hesitation, Mohamed Salah. I, I don't even know how it's a debate. Look at their numbers across their, their careers. Um, it's disrespectful to Mo to mention Salah in the same or to mention Hazard in the same breath in my opinion now look I've said this many times Eden Hazard on his day was a great footballer but those days were not frequent enough he didn't have the level of consistency that Mo has had Liz lovely to see you my friend Liz gifted an Anfield Agenda membership thank you Liz how many live shows have you done if you don't mind me asking one Dublin Belfast, or excuse me, Boston was due to be the second. And um, obviously, for various reasons, that show didn't happen. So yeah, Belfast will be show number two. Dublin will be show number three. And um, building up to the UK shows then in August. Uh, do you think if Ameren comes in, Anasio is a definite signing, said Joshua Hayward. Uh, thank you for your question, Joshua. And I'd love to know everybody else's thoughts on this as well, but happy to give you mine. Um, no, I wouldn't say a definite. But what I would say cert for certain is we need centre-backs. And if Ruben Ameren was going to come in and play three at the back, I would suggest we need two centre-backs. Um I like the idea of Inacio, and I think most people in the chat would be happy with, with Inacio. So 
So for those who aren't aware, Inacio plays on the left side of a back three for Sporting. Diamande plays on the right side of a back three. With a name that will be familiar to you playing in the centre, Sebastian Coates is still playing his trade, believe it or not, at Sporting Lisbon. So their back three setup is usually Inacio on the left, Sebastian Coates in the centre and Diamande on the right. So two of those centre-backs are likely to be in demand this summer. Diamande is one who's probably attracting the most interest um, from a whole host of clubs. I'm open to be corrected on this, but I believe Diamande's release clause is about €70 million. Euro. And then, of course, we have Inacio, who's been linked to Liverpool even before Ruben Amram was linked as manager. So I don't think it's out of the question to assume that we will look at Inacio. Um, I just don't know if Ruben Amram will be warned not to come back to you know his former club to try and poach players, but I guess time will tell. Can you please explain Amram's style to me? Uh, I'm not clued up on him enough. As I've pointed out before, my friend, Arian, there is a video up on the channel saying everything you need to know about Ruben Amram, and I am going to make a more in-depth one over the next week or two, uh, giving you more of an, an update on his style, um, and a better flavour of what maybe we can expect when he comes to Liverpool, if indeed he does come to Liverpool. Gumi has put in a really good question, and again, I'd love to get the audience's uh, response to this one. Gumi asked, do you think Sepp Vandenberg will stay next season? It's a good question, Gumi, because if you look at the reports or the um, performances he's putting in with Mainz in the Bundesliga, you would have to say Sepp Vandenberg probably does deserve his future to be resolved this summer. Now, whether that's with Liverpool or whether that's elsewhere, I guess time will tell. Um, but he's done himself no harm. Uh, do I think he'll make it at Liverpool? At a push, no. But not definitively. Um, I, just, I would be surprised if he comes back into the fold and gets chosen for Liverpool. But stranger things have happened. You never know. Does Ruben Amram speak English? Yes, indeed, he does. I can confirm that to you. He does speak English. Do you think Amram fits Liverpool? I absolutely, 100% do, for a host of reasons, and I'll try my best to explain them to you right now. Um, he's a young up-and-coming coach. Good, that ticks the box. Uh, he has a track record of overperforming uh, against competitors with bigger budgets. Now, that's not a sexy thing to hear, right? Because immediately we all think FSG cheapskates. But it's also a good trait to have. It doesn't mean that we can't up that budget of his and bring in players that hopefully he can still make overperform. But he ended a drought for Portugal. For not, or for Port, start that again. He ended a 19-year drought for Sporting Lisbon by delivering them a league title. He looks likely to back that up now a couple of years later with a Portuguese double. Uh, and they're a club that just doesn't have the spending power of the likes of Porto and Benfica. You know, you also look into his relationship with his players and those bonds are very strong. And his relationship with the Lisbon fans is incredible considering his background is with some of their arch rivals, Benfica. So there's a lot of stuff in Ruber Am Amarum, excuse me, that makes sense to me. Um, the more I look into his style of play, the more I think, yes, we will have to make changes to the way we set up if he uses his preferred system of 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, but look, honestly, I do. I do. I'm not going to hide the fact that it's it's a disappointment Alonso chose to say at Leverkusen. But I've always said, after him, Ruben Amram is my second choice. And Liverpool have had a habit of getting second choices right. Look at the Salah situation. Jurgen Klopp won the Julian Brandt. We went out, we got Mohamed Salah. And the rest, as they say, is history. I think there was a super chat. Uh, not happy with the ref on Sunday. Ain't he a City fan? Um, I don't think he's a City fan. He is from Greater Manchester. Anthony Taylor is, I think, an Alteringham fan on paper, if I'm not mistaken there, uh, Tanya. But... So here's my take on the refereeing situation. I think a lot of these referees who grew up in Greater Manchester, and I think there's four or five referees in the Premier League that have roots in and around Manchester... My problem is that a lot of them grew up in an era where Manchester United would have been dominant, win a lot of Premier League titles. So a lot of the family, friends and influences around these referees will probably have ties to Manchester United. Now, I'm not accusing any referee in the Premier League 
of intentionally having favouritism to United. Howard Webb doesn't referee anymore. He was one that I would absolutely, him and Martin Atkinson, two that I would absolutely have held a grudge against. But I don't think it's a great look that you have these referees who have grown up in an area of dominance by one club. And there's so many referees from that part of the world refereeing in the Premier League. I feel like football is getting to a point now where we need more transparency and we need more questionable refereeing appointments removed. So, as you know, for a long time, Tanya, I've been somebody who's championed the idea of um, UEFA having a group of top-tier referees that rotate amongst Europe top leagues, getting used to different styles of play, different ways to officiate games, getting clubs used to how referees on the continent may referee if they play in European competitions. And that would, of course, remove a lot of these inbuilt biases. Because some of these referees may not like certain clubs, may not like certain ways that they're received in stadiums by fans. They may not like or have had run-ins with certain managers. So one of the questions I have is, will Paul Tierney, as an example, will his attitude to Liverpool change after Jurgen Klopp goes? Will Ruben Amram have a better um, relationship with Paul Tierney on the sideline? These are the type of things that I think um, we need to find answers to. But I know it's a long-winded answer, but no, he isn't a City fan. But it still doesn't sit right with me that a greater Manchester referee is refereeing a game in Manchester between us and Manchester United. Uh, people just let me know. City have scored. Phil Foden 2-1. Look, honestly, I didn't go into tonight's round of games expecting Arsenal or Manchester City to drop points at home. I fully expected them. Even though Aston Villa is a tricky team, they've got no Ollie Watkins tonight. They're away from home. I expected City to win. Same for Arsenal at home against Luton. Same way their fans, I'm sure, will be assuming tomorrow we go out and beat Sheffield United. Uh, the only bonus, I guess, that those two clubs had tonight is that they get to play before we do. So Arsenal get to go back top of the Premier League tonight and hopefully it's just for 24 hours. Is Martinez injured? Are we, if you're talking about the Aston Villa keeper, he's ill, not injured. He has a... I don't know if it's food poison or a stomach bug or something, but he is ill. So that's why Villa have their backup keeper in goal. Does nobody fancy Simone and Zaghi? His name has started to come to the fore a little bit more over the last week. Um, there's also a lot of talk that he's expected to sign a new contract over in Italy. So um, I don't think he's been totally blanked because Inzaghi is a very well regarded coach. I don't believe he speaks English, but I suppose he could take English lessons between now and the end of the season if he needed to. But I've got to be honest and say, no, I've not really seen anything too strong. But he is a great coach, and I can understand why you've inquired as to why he hasn't been mentioned more. Oh, Man United, Martinez. Yes, he's injured. But I think he was talking about the Villa keeper. But either way, they're both out. Uh, one with an injury, one with an illness. So, no... Lissandro Martinez for United this weekend. Uh, I also think no Rafa Varane, if I'm not mistaken. No Lingard, if I'm not mistaken. I think the only one they really have available is Harry Maguire. I've seen the Premier League are using no ball boys now as well. What's everyone's thoughts on that? I actually don't mind it, George. I actually don't mind it, you know. Um, ball boys have had some really funny and really important moments, you know, no more so than Trent getting that ball for the, the quick corner against um, Barcelona, but they can also be a uh, little wind-up merchants at times. So I like the idea of ball boys just leaving the balls and the cones and players getting them. I actually don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, Stargirl, thank you so much for your super chat, my friend. Appreciate you as always. Said, I have to admit, I miss seeing the big Italian teams competing for Champions Leagues. I like seeing clubs from all over Europe, like Ajax in the Netherlands, instead of the same countries all the time winning. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm old enough to remember Marseille winning the European Cup. I'm old enough to remember that Ajax team. I think in, was it 95 they won um, as well? So yeah, I agree. It would be nice to get some uh, rotation around Europe of the European Cup, definitely. Uh, Joshua said, favourite takeaway, pizza. Always pizza, dude. I'm a, an absolute pizza fiend. If you can get me a cheese pizza, I'm happy. Sterry said, Craig, I love you. I don't know why I'm getting loads of love tonight by you amazing guys and girls, but thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. And I certainly appreciate your kind feedback like that. 
Uh, makes it a lot nicer than the early days when there was lots of trolling and people, you know, not being very nice. Would you take Fonseca for free and use the 20 million for team improvements? No. We won't pay 20 million, by the way, Kevin John, for Ruben Amarim. I think we'll probably get him for somewhere between 10 and 15 million euro, would be my guess. Um, what's that, about 12 million pound, maybe? Uh, and honestly, I don't have any issues with Liverpool having to pay that. You know, he's under contract. Think of it this way if somebody was coming in to take Jurgen Klopp out of Liverpool, and Jurgen wanted to go. I would fully expect John W. Henry and FSG to command and demand a significant fee if Jurgen wanted to move on. So, no, not unusual. And I think he's the right man. Do I understand why people would have doubts about him? Of course. Any manager at this point is going to have somewhat of a risk attached, even Alonso. You know, but what I don't buy, and this is something I'm going to push back on with a lot of people I've seen in the media, this talk from the likes of Glenn Johnson and some others, that Liverpool should almost bring in a sacrificial lamb for a year or two because the next manager is absolutely deemed, they're doomed to fail after Jürgen. I don't buy into that thought process at all. If I was a young up-and-coming manager who had achieved a little bit in the league and was offered the job to come in and manage this Liverpool group, I mean, I'd bite your hand off. And I think that would be the attitude of a lot of top coaches. You don't get to the levels these guys are at, whether it's Xabi Alonso, Ruben Amarum, or any of the other really good up-and-coming coaches. You don't get to that level without backing yourself, without believing in your ability. And I like to think that these guys have big big balls and that they look at these jobs and go, that's a bit of me, that. Because if they don't, they're probably not the right candidate, the right character. Look, in Alonso's case, the situation may have been just one of loyalty to Leverkusen, seeing through the project understandable i still think it's the wrong decision but understandable i don't buy into this we need to get somebody who comes in and says this is it i'm getting a team in a good place great young talent coming through i will have some funds in the transfer market and back into the champions league so yeah no more sacrificial lamb nonsense it's glenn johnson and anybody else with that narrative can do one as far as i'm concerned it's defeatist and we don't need defeatist thinking we need positivity do you think we'll spend over 100 million in the window? I absolutely do, but probably not for the reason that you want me to. I think we're going to sell Salah and get over the money you're talking about, and that will be reinvested. Um, and you know what? As much as I want to keep Mo, I have to say, I do understand both sides of this decision. I don't understand how Michael Edwards or FSG could look at it and think, we'll never have an opportunity to get this type of money back again. And I can also understand how us as fans would look at it and go, but dude's still delivering. He's still scoring goals. He's still our tallies man. Give him a new deal. So it's a tough decision. One of the toughest decisions I think that they've had to make since they've come to the club. Uh, who's the guy from Benfica coming in as part of Edwards' team? No problem, dude. Give me two seconds and I'll give you a bit of background on him. I'm just scrolling back through my notes here. Is it this one? No. One sec. I have notes on him. I'm just scrolling back so I can find them and give you a good bit of info on them. Do, 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 do. Still scrolling, 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 scrolling. Where are you? Do, 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 no, no, no. Do, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Still scrolling. Shows you how many bits and pieces I go through in my notes. Um, was it that one? Nope. One sec, mate. I'm still trying to find this info here for you. Come on, come on, come on. Update, update, update. My God, how far back do I have to go in my notes? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I think I've gone too far back. Leave it with me. I'm going to try and find that information for you over the coming minutes. Uh, I do have information on him. I just don't seem to have it to hand for some reason. So that one? Nope. Scrolling through my notes here, frantically trying to figure out where it is. 
Where is it? Come on now, Craig. Um, sorry, this does not make for good viewing, I know. I apologise. Just trying to remember what day it was that I sent these notes in. Honestly, I can't find it at the minute, which is bugging me because I had a whole long thing. Is it this one? Ah, I've got it. Thank you. I found it. Apologies for the wait. So, a piece that was on The Athletic said, Liverpool looking to hire Pedro Marquez, Benfica's technical director. Liverpool's owner, Fenway Sports Group, are set to appoint Benfica technical director, Pedro Marquez, in their new look football structure. The Athletic reported last month that Marquez will be employed by the Boston-based company rather than Liverpool as they seek to utilise his expertise in attracting global talent. So, you know the way we spoke about Michael Edwards coming in not just as um, three days later. Okay, well you can fuck off. How about fucking off, Abbas, and showing a bit of respect, mate? I could have just given him an answer and said no. I don't have it, but I wanted to try and answer the gentleman's question, so I went look it. Don't like it, piss off, mate, and watch somebody else. Uh, anyway, he went on to say uh, he's got to be employed by Boston instead of just Liverpool. Think of it like Michael Edwards, who's coming in as the FSG's director of football. So he's going to come in and do a similar thing in helping with the multi-club model. Uh, Marquez has shown to Liverpool the following club deal, signed Darwin Nunes. He was part of the negotiations. We brought him in 2022. He was a former first team performance analyst at Manchester City when Julian Ward was a scout at the club. So they have a, a pre-existing relationship there. He went on to say Marquez later switched to a coaching and analysis lead role for City Football Group in a multi-club model that owes own shares in Manchester City, Girona, Melbourne City and eight other teams around the globe. Uh, another article says, who is Pedro Marquez? Marquez began his career as a youth coach at Sporting in 2004, advancing through the industry. Six years later, he took up a first team performance analyst position with Manchester City, the same time the former Red Sporting director Julian Ward was a scout there. He then moved into a coaching and analysis lead position within the City Football Group in 2014, marking his first steps into the working world of part of a multi-club model. Instead of just City, he helped to oversee other clubs the group bought shares in and acquired ownership of in 2014, New York City, Melbourne City and Yokohama Marinos. By the time he departed in 2018, uh, City Football Group had stakes in six other clubs across the globe. Since then, he's worked for Benfica as the youth technical director. In 2022, he was involved with the discussions that resulted in Red Sporting Director Julian Ward on the opposite end. So there you go. That is a little bit of who he is. And don't worry, I'll make a video giving you more information on him and what we can expect um, if he does come into the fold with Liverpool. Craig gets wound up so easily. It's not getting wound up. Why should I put up with it? See, you grew up in an era where you think this shit is acceptable. I grew up in an area where I was given manners. And I'm doing my best to fulfil somebody's request to give them information. Do you think I should have to listen to assholes? Because I don't. Nor do I want to put up with them. So, if you think that's getting wound up, you're an idiot. It's a lack of respect. There's a very big difference. Very simple. Think of it like that. Respect costs nothing and should be a minimum. I show respect to people that ask me a question. I expect the same respect back. Not to be yapped at by some little no mark behind a keyboard who wouldn't say that if he was standing in front of me. Uh, I still have a feeling that Alonso will have a change of mind and could be persuaded. I don't know. Well, I mean, I've, I've I've flirted with that idea a little bit at times. I can't lie to you. Uh, but I don't think the boy is for changing. I think he's um, I think he's made his decision now, and he'll see through the next season with Leverkusen. Um, simple as that, really. It's disappointing. I'm not going to lie to you. It's definitely disappointing. 
Uh, Craig, do you mind doing a poll with all the contenders to see where most of your followers are? Sounds like a good idea, Kenneth. Um, yeah, no worries, dude. Give me give me some suggestions for names then, and I'll throw it into a poll. I can only obviously put four in. So if you guys want to throw in some suggestions of who you'd like to see polled, absolutely. Sounds like a really good idea. And thank you for it, Kenneth. Appreciate you, mate. See? That's the response you get if you show somebody a bit of respect. Very big difference. Maybe the commenter before needs to understand that respect needs to be taught. Maybe his parents have a question to answer. I don't know. But I was taught respect by my parents. Right, so who do you want as manager? We'll start off with Amarum, obviously, because he's going to be one. Obviously, we won't put in Alonso because it ain't going to happen. So Nagelsmann, yeah, that seems like a good choice. Is there a double N at the end of Nagelsmann? I know it's double G. Is there, I think there's a double N at the end of it as well. Or is there a double G and a double N? Oh, God, my spelling's so bad. I'm going to remove the middle G because it doesn't look right. Right, one more. Um, Mourinho, Nagelsmann. Mourinho's not under consideration. That's not going to happen. Uh, Mata. I've not really seen him mentioned. Um, oh, I've got one for you. If, you. if you'd... Zidane. There's more chance of me becoming Liverpool manager than Zidane. Um, what's his name? Slot. Does Arne Slot have one or two T's in his name? Does anybody know? Uh, Inzaghi I'm going to go with as the last option because I have had seen a lot of people inquire about Inzaghi so I'm, I'm going to put him in as the last option. Big Sam. Oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine? My God. Slot. Is there one or two sleaze and sleaze? I don't even know what letters are anymore. Anybody know what ABC is? It's one T. Thank you. Right. So, who do you want was the question. And I've put four options in there. Amaram, Nagelsmann, Slot or Inzaghi. I think they're the four most realistic ones. Kings, the Zerbi's fallen down the pecking order. Thomas Frank didn't really make it to the final shortlist. Although, he is a manager who's obviously is overachieved with Brentford and as... Um, you know, I don't think... I look at Thomas Frank almost like the same way I look at um, Cholo Simeone. A good manager that plays with a, almost a siege mentality of an eleven, rather than going out there to try and be proactive. Maybe that's just the team he has and he's trying to make the most of the tools at his disposal. I don't know. Uh, Craig, this is off topic, but what are your tattoo sleeves, if you don't mind me asking? There's not really much reason behind them, Brandon. Um, yeah, I... I, I <laughs> This is going to sound so silly, but I just say to my tattoo guy, Andrew, whatever you're feeling, man, go ahead. You know, that's, I'm not lying. It's that simple. And Andrew just went ahead. One sleeve is kind of a bit uh, darker than the other with regards to what style it is. The other one's a bit more tribal. So yeah, it's that simple, really. I just let Andrew loose and uh, usually I like what he does. The only ones that mean something to me, I have both the times my kids were born on my wrists and I have the date that I was married on the other side of my wrist. Other than that, the ones on my arms don't really have much of a meaning. May I ask who Slot is? Absolutely, Arne Slot, um, manager in the Eredivisie, uh, manager who's doing very well, was uh, very close to getting the Spurs job before Big Ange Postacoglu. They looked at him quite a bit. But um, yeah, he's he's an up-and-coming young coach and one that I think will make it to the Premier League eventually. Ralph Ranić, anyone, said Matt Lynch. Uh, you know what? I would have taken Ranić previously. You know, uh, when we were looking for a director of football as an example, I thought Ralph Ranić's name was one that could have and should have been in that conversation. I don't know if things have changed from the Bayern side, but I remember seeing a couple of weeks ago that they weren't against the idea of bringing in Ralf Ranić for a year or two to reassess the managerial market then. Again, I don't know if that's changed, if Bayern Munich have their sights set now on De Zerbe. Uh, according to Plettenberg, it looks like they may. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Spalletti. I, I don't rate Spalletti that much.
Ah, yes, Mark just reminded me that the article that I was speaking about was written by Sam Maguire. Thank you, Mark. That's spot on, yes. Sam Maguire wrote a good piece on why uh, he thinks that Ruben Amram is perhaps even a smarter choice than Alonso. Any Liverpool tattoos? Uh, yes, sort of. I have a tattoo on my leg that is a play on the Old McFay Foundation banner, but it's myself and my son, and there's a roadway in it, and the roadway is made of autism jigsaw pieces, and at the end of the road is a liver bird. So it's like myself and my son walking hand in hand together uh, on the road of autism towards Liverpool. My son in this tattoo, though, is a gingerbread man, and I'm not winding you up. He is a gingerbread man. Uh, Amram is by far the best option, said DKH96. Uh, is it fair to say Amram is a risky appointment? Um, I think it's, like anything else, mate, a calculated risk. Um, I would say it's the same about Alonso, by the way. You know, as much as I like Shabby Alonso, I would say that it's still uh, a risk if you brought Alonso in. So, yeah, it's a risk, but... I think risk that we've tried to mitigate as much as we can. Um, and I'm excited by it. Look, it's still taking me time to process Jurgen leaving. But I'm excited by the prospect of a fresh start, a new manager, uh, you know, perhaps a new formation to get used to. Because I've loved the idea of us playing with a back three for a long time. But Jurgen wasn't really one for it. So uh, the coaches we've tended to look at since... Um, Amarum, Alonso play with back three systems so yeah I'm excited by it you know it's, as I said it is disappointing that Jurgen's leaving but I'm kind of burying my head in the sand on that for now do I like gingerbread uh, sometimes depends how strong the ginger is in it but the reason it's a gingerbread man is because my son's got red hair my wife has red hair um, and I take the piss <laughs> That's that's the God's honest truth. Craig, Man United were rejected by Amram last year, said Zop. Oh, well, that makes me like him even more, dude. That makes me like him even more. What about Ten Hag? No, we already have somebody, mate, who who, who wears the mighty uh, the mighty red costume. We don't need um. We don't need Ten Hag, or sorry, Ten Lasso, to come in and wear Mighty Red's costume. We have somebody to wear it already. Any ideas on the assistant manager? You know what? Um, I'm embarrassed to say no. I don't, mate, and that's on me. I need to look into that, King, and that is going to be my homework for this evening. I'm going to look into Ruben Amram's backroom team at Sporting and look at the likelihood of then potentially come in with them. So I don't know the answer now, but I will look into it. Uh, United prediction, said Monk is king. Oh. I'm, I'm going to try to not give you the arrogant prediction that's going to come back and bite me in the ass. 2-0. 2-0 to Liverpool. And that isn't the arrogant one. The arrogant one's 4-0. Uh, someone has to take the job after Jürgen just the same when Paisley took over he didn't want the job don't forget and we all know what he won exactly but I've seen, as I mentioned at the start mate I've seen a lot of chatter in the last few weeks about the next manager nearly being a write off I mean people kept looking at the Alex Ferguson situation at United when David Moyes came in after him I don't see it the same way because Alex Ferguson had wrung every ounce of energy and had really overachieved probably with that United team in its last season winning that Premier League title. I think I think whoever comes in to take the Liverpool job is getting a much better squad, as in the profile of the squad. A lot of younger players, a good mix, a squad that was refreshed last summer, some really good talented midfielders in there and Alexis McAllister, Sobosly, Elliot Jones, Graven Burke. I think it's a good job and I think it's a job like remember when Jürgen was announced he was departing one of the things that I wanted to try and get across at the time was 
how unusual a situation it was. Jürgen wasn't departing because he was crap or because results were terrible or the fans fell out of love with him or he had a run-in with the owners. He's departing because he felt like he can't give the energy he needs to the job anymore. But that's unusual. We get A new manager gets to come in to a good squad that are confident, that have won trophies, that have a great youth profile coming through. It's, it's a really, really unusual but attractive proposition. Uh, no arrogance intended, but very confident we'll win the league. Squad performing brilliant and have Jones, Jota and Allison to return. I love that optimism and confidence, Ashley. Um, we've every right to believe we can go and win the league. Of course we do. Uh, I think what makes it all the more remarkable for me is... And I'm not saying other clubs haven't had injuries this season. Of course they have. But we've had a horrendous run of injuries to some very, very high-profile, important players. Alisson being out. Mo out for almost three months between injuries and the AFCON. Jota being out. Trent being out for a good while now as well. And we've still found a way. We've unearthed an absolutely incredible young right-back, right-wing-back in Connor Bradley. You've seen Jarrell Kwanzaa come through this season and play like an established pro. We've got exciting prospects in Jaden Dans and some other youngsters in the attacking end of the pitch as well. We've got players like Fabio Carvalho out on loan who could come back in. Tyler Morton who's had a good season and if nothing else will probably give Liverpool some much needed transfer funds if they decide that uh, his future isn't at the club. I'm really optimistic. So yeah, you have every right to be confident Ashley and it's tight, it's close but I feel like, if, for me, if we get through this weekend and we're still top of the league, I think we win it. Pep seems rattled recently with his comments, said Corbin. As he should do. Because not only are his team some ways underperforming this season, but I think the net is starting to close in now. And the pressure of the situation with the 115 charges is ramping up. Because the clock's ticking. And... I can't speak for everybody in the world, but I do have a feeling that the appetite for City to face a punishment is substantial in the Premier League. Outside of the City fans, I think most neutrals look at Manchester City and and know what they are. And that's why I've got zero respect for them. If we lose the league title to Arsenal, as I've said all year, I'll be on here congratulating my Arsenal support mates, Lee Gunner and, and some others and... It'll suck, it'll hurt, but I'll have respect for league title winners. If City win it, I'll pay no attention to it. and I'll just, I, I won't even register in my mind. I'll just put another asterisk beside that year's league title. Uh, TOTT2KZ1, again, thank you for your super chat, my friend. If we do play with a 3-4-3 formation, who plays on the left wing, Robbo or Diaz? Or maybe do you see Robbo playing as a centre-back going forward? I don't like the idea of him playing as a centre-back, Robbo. I know he's done it for Scotland, but personally I don't like the idea of it. Robbo in a wing-back role, I think, can absolutely do that. But what I would say is, I expect a young challenger to come in. Whether that's Luke Chambers, or whether the new manager would go in and bring somebody else in. This summer is the summer I would sell Costas. I've said this for quite a while it's got nothing to do with dislike for Costa Simicus. I think he comes across as a lovely guy. Certainly seems to enjoy being uh, playing for Liverpool Football Club and has done no harm to us whatsoever. But I still don't believe that he's going to be a solution. He's only ever going to be a backup, in my opinion. So I think we do need to address that side with a younger person. Now, Luke Chambers could be that guy. Xabi Alonso was really interested in bringing him on loan to Leverkusen. So perhaps... Perhaps he becomes the challenger on that left side. What is Gakpo's favourite position? Uh, left wing. Uh, why doesn't Pep Linders take over from Klopp? Makes the most sense as he is the same energy. So it is perhaps a surprise, Clinton, that he wasn't more at the forefront of our thoughts. But I think he ruled himself out. Now, I don't know if he didn't feel like he'd really have an opportunity to take the job or if what he mentioned about them coming in as a team and them departing as a team is is his thought process. 
understandable either way. What I would say is if he goes to another club, whether it be Ajax or somewhere else, and has some success and continues to increase his profile um, as a coach, there's every opportunity you could see him return at some point down the line. Because we all know about the man's ability on the training ground. I mean, Jurgen allows him to take most sessions. So, yeah, uh, just it is a surprise that he hasn't been mentioned more strongly, but he ruled himself out pretty early. Do you play Fortnite? I don't know. I don't play computer games all that much at all, to be honest with you. I just, I never really been a big fan. Um, yeah. Probably because I know if I really got into them, I'd have no time in life for anything else because I'd become zoned in and focused and obsessed with them. Uh, Pep wants to pave his own way, it sounds like. Seems Ajax is in for him. I think that's a great job by the way for him to step into the ix job uh, i think that would be really good because ix are a club that have underachieved this season and underachieved massively the signings that they've made in the previous window or two very questionable compared to normal ix signings and pep linders would get that club he would understand obviously he's got a finger right in the pulse of dutch football so i think it's a great appointment if he does get the job You should play FIFA. I tried a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year. I did a little FIFA series, um, but I just don't like it. I find the game too scripted, and I don't like anything that... I'm old school, right? In my day, you bought a computer game, you put it in the PS, and that was it. There was no more buying crap after that. Once computer games got to the point of in-game purchases, that was the end of me playing computer games, because I think it's nonsense. I think it's just a money racket and I think it's a uh, it doesn't seem to reward your talent playing the game as it does who has the deepest pockets a lot of the time so yeah that was the end of it for me I, I just I couldn't in-game purchases just seem like such a rip-off uh, what do you think of Thiago Mora I don't know much about him Sultan I'm going to be honest, I, I don't know much about him. Um, happy to be given some information on him, but rightly, I, I, rightly, I should say, I'm being honest, I don't know much about him. Uh, I would rather Arsenal win the European Champions League than Manchester City or Real Madrid, even though I hate saying that, but I don't like Real Madrid. But look, Stargirl, I take you back to, I believe, your own post earlier on, where you said it would be great to see the Champions League spread amongst other clubs. And yeah. Loads of people would, would shout us down for saying it wouldn't be bad to see Arsenal win the Champions League because lots of us love bantering the fact that Arsenal haven't won the Champions League. But for the good of the game, yeah, the more clubs that can win these trophies, the better. Nobody wants a closed shop. Nobody wants the same teams winning stuff over and over. It's why, the, it's why La Liga, I think, is going to continue to struggle. Not to attract players to Real Madrid and Barcelona, but outside of them, the league just hasn't really been competitive. You had Rafa Benitez and Valencia win a few league titles. Then you had Atleti, who have got good financial backing coming in and winning some, but it's such a dull league. It's Real Madrid, Barca, Real Madrid, Barca, backwards, forwards, backwards. They get more money, more... Sp they just outspend everyone. And maybe people will look at the Premier League and think similarly, but at least we've had a Leicester City. You know, at least Liverpool, for all our own success and history, it took us 30 years to get there and win that Premier League title. So, yeah, more sharing of silverware is definitely a good thing for the game. Uh, Alexander said, hello, Craig, love your wonderful work. Thank you, my man. But as I always say, man, my job's easy. All I have to do is, is talk about the comments you guys make and speak about the football club I'm obsessed with. So... It's, uh, it's It never feels like work. Literally anyone but City to win the Champions League would do nicely. I would throw Real Madrid in that mix as well. I, I can't stand Real Madrid. And do you know what else that pisses me off? So we've got Real Madrid potentially going to go win another Champions League. Bringing in the likes of Bellingham. Bringing in the likes of Mbappe most likely. Bringing in Endrick. And also saying openly they don't want to be in the Champions League. They want the Super League. I wonder at what point UEFA are going to grow a pair. 
and say to them, if you don't want to be in our competition, if you want to go and play in the Super League, then piss off and play in the Super League. Because eventually, that competition is going to have to either start or fold. And if it starts, and if the Super League goes ahead without any English clubs, without, I believe, any German clubs as well, what's the future going to be for those players? Because we don't know any potential um, consequences for going to play in the Super League rather than FIFA and UEFA branded competitions. We don't know if these players will be unable to play for their international teams. I have a feeling, and I can't prove this because it's only a, a thought, it feels like to me Real Madrid are stacking the odds so much in their favour with so much talent that they've almost overstretched to bring in an Mbappe, a Bellingham, a Vinny Jr., a Camavinga, a Shuameni, an Alfonso Davies, or whomever else, to almost dare UEFA to say, kick us out. We've got most of the star players coming through for the next generation. Go ahead and kick us out and see what happens. I feel like they're almost taunting them to do it by saying, we've got these stars. They're going to be wearing our shirt in any competition we play in. 3-1, Manchester City now. Again, I wasn't expecting them to drop the points this evening, so no surprise to see them both win it. Uh, John Williams, thank you for your super chat, John. You're very kind. Said, hi, Craig. Do you think Alonso was chosen to stay at Leverkusen and not manage Liverpool? Why do I think? I would love him as manager. So... The Liverpool fan of me, John, wants to believe that he wanted to see through the project with Leverkusen for another year. He wanted to take them into the Champions League. He wanted to keep that team together, to not sell Wurz or Incapier or have the team um, raided by top European clubs and give them a year to remember and see what he can do. Can he back-to-back -back win the Bundesliga? Um, but the cynic in me feels like he's waiting for Real Madrid. And I don't think I'm alone in that. I very much expect when Carlo leaves, if Alonso continues his pathway as he is, that that'll be the job he takes. And maybe it's his dream. Maybe he wants to go back to Spain. Maybe you know he wants to be closer to his family. Um, I believe, and I'm open to be corrected on this, but if someone said to me that he was asked once about his parents coming over to watch a Leverkusen game and he's, I think he said something like it's too cold for them to come visit and maybe at this stage of his life with his parents getting on a bit he wants to be closer to his family and he can understand that because um, Liverpool is, is not going to be much warmer than Leverkusen so the sooner they're thrown out of the league the better said Nomad look I, I, I really mate nobody wants City punished more than me I despise them almost as much as I despise the cowards in the English media for not calling them out every single week. I don't want to listen to another show where Manchester City get fluffed and we get told how great they are, how Guardiola's a genius, how it's the, the greatest assembled team in Premier League history, blah, 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 blah. But nobody mentions the elephant in the room. Nobody mentions the fact that we all believe without any doubt that City are suspect at best. It's, it pisses me off. It does. It's like nobody gives a damn about the integrity of the game. And these are... And what really, really, really riles me on that is... The, and when I say the media, I'm not really talking about written journalists here. I'm talking about your pundits on the likes of Sky and TNT Sport who have a real big platform and are just tone the company line or are refusing to speak up and they bite their tongue it's cowardice it's disgusting and it's spitting in the face of true football fans who want the best for the game i'll never ever ever forgive them for it because it's like everyone's willing city to get away with it inside that little bubble of the industry I find the whole thing disgusting, just disgusting. And I just wish for, for once somebody had a backbone 
and said what we're all thinking. Because I promise you, the first pundit to break out and actually grow a pair is going to have the entire football world behind them. Saying to them, finally, look, look at Ian Wright. Ian Wright spoke out a little bit on one show, on Monday Night Football. And look at the look at the acclaim and the positivity towards Ian Wright. And he barely went in on them, just a little bit. Imagine if somebody really came out and said it. I think they'd get an overwhelming amount of support. Uh, Craig, we have to win all the games we have right now. Nine games. We shouldn't take any chances. It's in our own hands. Um, do we have to win them all? Don't know. Do I think we'll win them all? Probably not. Um, but I don't think Arsenal will win them all either. So, I think we can afford a draw in those nine games. But it won't be tomorrow against Sheffield United. We should win that game. But after that, I can see a draw somewhere. But I can also see Arsenal dropping points. I think this is why I made it clear the other day that I wanted Arsenal to beat City. Because that would have given us breathing room over City. Because all that's happened now is everybody's still concerned about City. Everybody's looking at City's running and going, they can win those remaining games, all of them. And that's why I said to you I wanted Arsenal to beat City. Because... I think that would have almost ended City's interest in the title. They would have been four points off. I, I couldn't... I don't think they'd have made that up on two teams. On Liverpool and Arsenal. So, that's why I wanted Arsenal to win. Um, and now, we still have a three-team title race where... Our psychology can be impacted by either of the other two. So, that was my thought process all along. Is I expect Arsenal to drop points. Is there news on Amram? Nothing new other than... Well, to be fair, I think we've gone through quite a bit of Amram news today. From the point that Barcelona are no longer in the race for his signature because they can't afford the release clause to the fact that Liverpool have started negotiations according to Pedro Sepulveda. Um, Fabrizio Romano saying that he is top of Liverpool's list at this moment in time. I think a lot of positivity today around the potential for Ruben Amram. Have you heard about the Alonso and Chelsea whispers? Yeah, those whispers are only inside Todd Bowley's head though. Because why would Xabi Alonso turn down Liverpool, Bayern Munich and probably Real Madrid to go to Chelsea? Who are a basket case at the minute. No, not a chance. Chelsea are going to have to sell a load of players. And they're looking at potentially moving on Reese James, Conor Gallagher, um... I wouldn't mind testing the resolve with another bid for, for or with a bid for Levi Colwell, in all honesty, but they deserve it. I'm just looking to see if they get a points deduction as well for all the shenanigans during the Roman Abramovich era. Dave, we are indeed mentality monsters, mate. We are indeed, sir. And I hope to look forward to catch up with you and meet you in person, Dave, at the Liverpool show. You look like you're supporting Forrest today. Uh, well, that would make my wife very happy, but no, no, no forest support today. Oh, I'm going to put the appeal out again. So we've, we think we have somebody sorted for the music for the Liverpool show, but I'm still looking to get people for the Dublin and Belfast show. So any singer-songwriter Liverpool fans out there, clip this up if you can, feel free. We're looking for somebody to come and... Do the two shows with us. Singer-songwriter based in Ireland who can do Belfast and Dublin, who knows the Liverpool songs and who's come, willing to come and have a laugh. Get in touch with us because we want to give somebody this role permanently. We want somebody to become part of the Anfield Agenda touring team and we want to find that right person. Male, female, does not matter to us. You can play a guitar, you can get a crowd going. Get in touch with us because uh, there's a spot there that we'd love to fill. Is Ben still with the channel? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Ben's been doing all the graphics. Today's Connor's day off. Uh, and Ben has been doing all the thumbnails and stuff for today. Ben also designed the posters for the two live shows. These uh, these babies right here. That's Ben's handiwork. So absolutely he is. Um, and again, both those shows, Dublin Belfast, will be going on sale on Friday morning. Phil Foden hat-trick. 
Interesting. Uh, five teams who want to get into the Prem from the Championship. Who I want. Five. I don't want to be shy about five teams in the Championship. Um, I'd like Leeds to get back up for a couple of reasons. I've got some uncles who are Leeds fans and, you know, we both, uh, both sets of fans have a dislike for Manchester United. Um... Do you know what? I, I don't care about Leicester if they come back up or not. I couldn't give a damn about them. I remember some of the singing from their fans when we went down to uh, their stadium. Um, who would I like to see come up? I wouldn't mind seeing Southampton come up, but they seem to be doing their best not to. Um, Ipswich would be great. That'd be a great story to see Ipswich back up in the Premier League. That would be, you know, I'm old enough to remember Ipswich around in the top division. So I wouldn't mind Ipswich coming up. Kieran McKenna's doing a brilliant job as well. Um that's other than that, I'm not really at fussed who comes up in all honesty. Uh Swansea, Borough, Ipswich, Leicester and Sunderland said Toes. I, I don't like. I, I've gone off Leicester City entirely. I found Leicester City's fans to be very shitty when we played them at times with some horrible chanting. And yeah, just like I, I like some of the Leicester City fans. I've got on with the likes of Lee Chappie over the years and, and Anthony as well. Um, But anybody who sings those tragedy chanting songs against us, I just lose any respect. See City 4-1 up, are you not concerned? No. I expected City to win. They're at home. I expect them to beat Aston Villa. No surprises there. Um, I expect us to go beat Sheffield United tomorrow as well. So, no. No big surprises. Um, no more or less concerned than I was before tonight's games kicked off. I'm more concerned about Sunday and Old Trafford than I am about that City result. Because right now, it is in our hands. And if we keep winning, there's nothing anybody can do about it. So we need to just, as the old cliche goes, take it one game at a time and not look too far ahead. Uh, I'm so concerned City will win all the remaining games. They're absolutely capable of doing it, mate. They are. But so are we. You know, both Arsenal can put together a run as well, by the way. I'm not trying to rule Arsenal out here. But we have a track record like City, of being able to grind out those wins. And I said it, and I don't often give myself a lot of credit, but I'm going to remind you all that at the very start of this season, when Manchester City still hadn't dropped a single point, I said to you all, I don't see the same fear in this Manchester City team as we've had in previous years. They don't look like the same outfit to me. So... I've, I've all through this season, I've not believed they're going to be anywhere near as dominant as they were in previous campaigns because I don't see the same intimidation in them. You know, I used to be really, really, really nervous when we played City because you couldn't expect a win. You didn't know it was going to be a battle. When we went to the Etihad and we got a point, I kind of felt disappointed because... Look, it was a great second half performance, by the way. Um, sorry, I'm getting my games confused. Um, when we played City, we drew. It was a great second half performance. But nah, I've just not seen them as the same team this year. It's very difficult to keep that same level of hunger and desire up when you're coming off the back of a season, you've just won a treble. Um, and I think the external pressures of the whole situation around their club and the points and the money. And I think it'll have its toll eventually. And Pep does look rattled this season. Am I worried about the refs on Sunday? I'm worried about the refs every week, Kelsey. I can't lie to you. I'm worried about them every single week because I feel like if we win the Premier League this year, we'll do it in spite of everything that's been put in our way. And I know people will tell us all that we're delusional and that, you know, we're looking for excuses, but you just go back and look at the big moments. Odegaard handball, 
that could have given us three points. The docu challenge on Alexis McAllister should have given us three points, or at least the opportunity to win that game. The Spurs game, at that time, was a top-of-the-table game. And again, robbed. And there's many, many more. It felt like every time we came up against somebody who was, at that moment, in a title race with us, the officials found a way to bottle it. And I'm not saying bottling it like they made the wrong decisions. The VAR operators didn't even have the courage of their convictions to send these referees to the monitors. Think about that. How can any VAR operator look at that Odegaard handball and not think it's at least drawn the referee's attention to it again? How can any VAR operator look at the challenge from Jeremy Doku and come out with the phrase, both players went in high? No, they didn't. And the fact that Howard Webb is trying to tell us all that what we see with our own eyes from our decades of watching the game isn't true speaks volumes for the integrity of the football in the Premier League right now and how it's been officiated. Howard Webb is a spoofer. Howard Webb is a disgrace. When you have pundits on every side of the Atlantic calling you out for your abject performances as the chief of the PGMOL and the standard of officiating. We deserve better. Football deserves better than these absolute chancers that we're seeing refereeing games. Uh, Leon, thank you so much, mate, for your super chat. You're very kind. So coming from the Netherlands, Slot is a, a Klopp-like trainer. Feyenoord was in the same position as Liverpool and he rebuilt it to the former glory. However, I think he needs a step in between first. Great to get your insight, uh, Leon. Thank you. On a, a coach that I only became aware of when he was linked to the Spurs job. But I agree with you. I think he is destined for good things. And I also agree with you that that step uh, in between would be a good fit. If uh, Where that's to, I don't know. But it's difficult to come in from a league like the Eredivisie to the Prem. Look at Eric Ten Hag as an example. Um, so yeah I, I like your comment and thank you Leon who is Slot Arne Slot A-R-N-E Slot is the manager of Feyenoord as Leon has said who's delivered them a league title and um, is a good coach I just don't know if he's ready yet for the Liverpool job so after leaving the poll up for 35 minutes we asked who would you want Ruben Amorim Julian Nagelsmann Arne Slot or Sibioni and Zaghi, and you guys have said, very straightforward, 88%, Ruben Amram is the man that you would like. So I think you're going to be very happy because I think Ruben Amram will be the next Liverpool manager. I'm not saying, don't say Craig said it is going to happen. I said, I think he's going to be the next Liverpool manager. But until until you get a Paul Joyce or Melissa Reddy or... Uh, James Pierce, don't listen to me. Just wait for the, the pros to give you the nod. Uh, can I get your top three in the league points as well? Oh, God, I don't know about the points tallies. I think the league ends up... Liverpool winning at City second, Arsenal third. But let me ask you a different question. Let me pose this a different way. All year we've heard about Arsenal's improvements. All year, and look, I'm not trying to deny them. All year we've heard about the Declan Rice factor, Arsenal learning from the mistakes of last season. But if Arsenal finished the campaign in third place, behind Liverpool and Manchester City, is that really an improvement? Now, yes, you can say they didn't fall away maybe at the end of the year and they put up a bit more of a fight. But ultimately, the rest is just window dressing. If they finished third... And don't win a trophy. Is that really progression? I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm honestly asking this as a question. There isn't, It isn't a loaded question that I expect one answer or the other. I don't know the answer to it. But it was a subject I'd seen somebody broach previously. And um, as I said, I truly don't know. Can you analyse Man City's fixtures? Remind me tomorrow. Oh no, we're, we're doing the watch along tomorrow, so not tomorrow. I will do it though, um, Friday. Remind me on Friday and we'll get it on Friday evening stream. 
Any injury updates? Yeah, no problem. Let me go through them for you before we finish up. So Kloppo spoke today in his presser and he said Curtis Jones is in full training and is in contention to play against Sheffield United. He goes on to say, not sure about him starting or not, but he's in contention to play some minutes. Uh, he said Diogo and Trent are training together in a group, but it looks like it'll be next week for them. Uh, he didn't give any real updates on Allison, other than to say he's working away with the goalkeeping coaches, but probably again next week before he res resumes training with the rest of the team. Uh, on Endo Club said he has a little knock, so we'll have to keep an eye on him to see if he'll be okay for tomorrow or not, but fingers crossed should be okay for Sunday. Uh, by Chechich is going to be training with the under 21s next week as he looks to step up his recovery as well. And Thiago, nothing there. Matip is doing some running, but Jurgen still thinks there'll be no chance of him getting some minutes before the season comes to an end, and that probably means that we will be saying our goodbyes to Joe Matip. Uh, 494 likes but we still have 1300 people in the chat so do drop a like my friends if you haven't and uh, I will read Corey your comment in one second but again I just want to give another shout out to remind you Friday morning these tickets for the show in Belfast and the show in Dublin we're going to be doing the limelight in Belfast and the academy in Dublin May 31st it's a Friday night for Belfast Sunday, June the 2nd, we're going to be in Dublin. Those tickets will be on Ticketmaster on Friday morning. I hope to see you there. Uh, now, Corey, to your comment. For me, Nagelsmann can't be in the race for the job. I want the manager who can come in straight away and not have an interrupted pre-season. It's a very good point, Corey. And honestly, mate, not one that I've seen mentioned too much when we've been talking about the potential of Julian Nagelsmann. I have my own reservations on him. Um, other than the very fair point you've made there. But yeah, well played. Yeah, good point. Take it on board fully. And um, you're right. We do want somebody who's at least going to be able to focus on the squad. And as we know, Nagelsmann will be taking uh, Germany into a home Euro. So we'll very much have his focus on that. Uh, the Academy, fair play lads, big step up from the Sugar Club. Um, look, I, I enjoyed the Sugar Club, in all honesty, but yeah, the Academy. And this time what you'll notice as well is we, we've got promoters behind us now. We've got MCD who are going to be helping us promote the shows, Ticketmaster, and we do hope, of course, that that leads to uh, increased awareness of the shows. And um, I can't wait. I cannot wait because I think end of May, start of June... I hope we can celebrate some silverware. I hope we can celebrate a league title and give Klopp the fair, farewell that uh, we all want to. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to them. I cannot wait. So, my friends, I'm going to say goodnight to you all. It's all, I can't believe it's been 90 minutes already. That's absolutely flown by. But again, thank you all so much. Do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so. Tomorrow, we will be live from half past six. We're going to be taking you through the game as always. Match reaction, player ratings. Don't forget to check out the Anfield Agenda Clips channel because we put up clips most days on there as well. And the social media reaction segment is going to be up there after the game. And don't forget to download SofaScore as well. You can use the link in the description or scan that QR code on screen. SofaScore, in my opinion, is the best app out there for your goal alerts, information on games, statistics, everything else you require. Um, yeah. Have a good one. I'll talk to you tomorrow where hopefully we feed.